Welcome to Strangeville. Welcome to the channel. My name is Kevin Strange, 20-year veteran of the underground. I'm a cartoonist, novelist, and independent filmmaker. And I am here today to share my love of comic books with you. And today we're going to take a look at the most controversial issue of what's already a strange and controversial comic book, uh, Shadowhawk, Shadowhawk 2, as a matter of fact. Who may, who, who, who's the, the guilty party behind Jim this? Uh, Bradford, uh, Jim uh, oh, Jim Valentino, uh, inked and lettered by Chance Wolf with backgrounds by Brad W. Uh, Foster and uh, colored by Frank Lopez. And it's uh, signed by Frank. Frank Lopez was proud to put his, uh, his name on this. Before we get into all that, uh, we are marching towards 1,000 subscribers on the channel gang. You know that magical number of uh, 1,000 subscribers. We're almost there, less than 200 to go. If you're not already subscribed, please hit that subscribe button below. And when we hit that 1,000 subscribers, as a thank you to everyone for their support, I'm going to put my graphic novel, uh, Kevin Strange's Space Worms, up as a free download on my Patreon. There's a link to the Patreon below. $3 a month gets you access to all of my comic books, including Kevin Strange's Space Worms, including The Wizard of Ganj, Too Many Dabs, Issues 1 and 2, uh, Death to Strangeville, and many, many others, including my novels and my movies, which uh, my friend Johnny, uh, Johnny Johnny from uh, Chicagoland is joining us down here. How you doing, uh, Johnny? Doing good. Uh, he is the uh, editor of almost all of my uh, of my films in the uh, Strangeville cinematic universe, and uh, he also plays the uh, titular mother in Colonel Kill Motherfuckers, and um, he plays uh, many many characters. He plays Johnny, the character Johnny, uh, and oh, also the character Johnny in Colonel Kill Motherfuckers. He plays the leader of a group of. Uh, Rampaging bums in Stiff Jobs, and uh, a smiling sad zombie in uh, in uh, Nixon Hogan's first appearance in Dead. He's here today to also share his love of uh, comics with us. Uh, he's the one that brought down uh, Shadowhawk Two from Chicago Land. But I am giving away a free PDF version of the 164 page um, epic splatterpunk horror comedy uh, outlaw underground graphic novel, Kevin Strange's Space Worms. Once we hit that uh, precious um, 1,000 subscribers. So without further ado, Johnny, what have you gotten us into today? So my history with Shadowhawk, uh, me and my friends, I was late, the latest to the comic books with my friends. And most of them had already been reading. And we had this thing, because none of us really had any money, that um, we would all pick heroes and comics that we would each like claim and then that person would buy those comics and no one else could buy them and then we would share them um so everybody else already had x-men spider-man uh superman batman like all the classics so the one that i picked was shadowhawk that was the one that i um gravitated towards and i started reading it um I, as a teenager i was very uh, apologetic. Hang on, hang on. Well, first of all, what 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 about Shadowhawk made you think this was your, this was your jam? Uh, I was like, well, if they're gonna have Batman and Wolverine, um, I'm gonna have Batman Wolverine. I'm gonna have both of those characters in one character. Um, it's, like that's... Raining, it's like raining in every single. And um, you know, as I look back on it, I, I definitely am, am more fond of it than when I read it then. But this was the issue that finally uh, kind of ended my run with it um, because it was just so out of left field for me um, as a teenager, at least. Um, so, I mean, we I already had to you know tell all my friends that this was the first superhero that had AIDS, so it was important. He's uh, such a weird character. He's a... Um, and they didn't... My, my, I, I had some of those Shadowhawks, too, but the, the one that really... Um, you know, I collected a lot of image in the 90s. The Max and Spawn and um, and Pit were, were some of my, my favorite, um, and Wetworks, to a lesser degree. <clears throat> were and uh, Savage Dragon, of course, Eric Larson, Savage Dragon, were uh, some of my favorite books back then. But um, I also 
gravitated towards Shadowhawk for whatever reason. Like you said, he was just like a weird um, Wolverine Batman hybrid. But I got into like this was my favorite weird ass fucking because it's already weird. It's already like a character with AIDS. Yeah. I think the first Shadowhawk is in is in second person, where it's yeah. talking talking as you 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 are on the tall building. You are staring down at the crime at night. Like you are Shadowhawk yes. in the in the um, in, not the dialogue, but in the um, in the in the. Well, you you, know, you didn't know who Shadowhawk was. Right. Uh, they basically was... hinted that there was many characters he could be in the comic. Right. But there was never a reveal of who Shadowhawk was. Right. Um, until this issue. Um, so he's got, so he's got AIDS and he's he's a complete mystery and it's just really fucking weird. And then Keith Giffen got a hold of him, the creator of uh, Trencher, and so we got Keith Griffin who does the writing and art, and uh, Alan Grant does the dialogue, of course. They're the, they're the team of Keith Giffen and Alan Grant, who did a ton of work on Lobo for DC. And uh, Keith Giffen gets this like weird trencher style, this like painterly, this like weird painting style that he does with trencher. He does here. Uh, if you hear the buzz sawing in the background, gang, sorry, we're doing some renovations here at the Strange Manor. We're adding a, a fifth edition to the fourth floor, so uh, pardon the, pardon our, our maintenance here. But, uh, you know, this is, I don't know, just as weird? Not just as weird, but um, we'll do we'll do issue, we'll do a, a series on the uh, these issues of um, images of Shadowhawk, because I think that Keith Giffen trencher style is unique in comics nothing looks like this uh but no story really goes where this issue of shadowhawk goes so johnny i mean uh if i remember uh, correctly hang on let me let me uh, pr you know if you if you're uh sensitive we're not going to say the word we'll say in in word in place of it yeah but there are uh trigger warning there are about to be in word bombs dropped in uh shadowhawk to number two so let's uh, let's just get there. So I believe in this story, uh, it's been a while since I've read it. I believe like he was either injured or something, or he was uh, out of commission. And there is a guy running around calling himself uh, Hawk's Shadow, who is uh, quote unquote fighting crime. I don't know about all this rain. What do you what do you think about all this rain? It's like on every fucking page. If it's, it's like rain, this. it could be other things. You think, he's being, <laughs> think he's being drenched in cum? Could be how he got all that AIDS. <laughs> this, is, this, this, is the, this is the AIDS origin, gang, of uh, oh, even more controversy. The AIDS origin of Shadowhawk here. He's being drenched in... Uh, is, I, would, I mean, that's about... I don't know how many different loads do you think <laughs> that is? It's like 350 dudes coming on at the same time. I mean, that, of course you're going to get AIDS. 350 dudes come on you at the same time. Uh, but yeah, I, I believe so. This Hawk's shadow is out fighting crime, but he's only targeting um, black people. That's pretty much all he's targeting. Um, I don't know who this guy is. Probably somebody's crossover with another other chapel. Chapel. That's image crossovering with every other comic <laughs> that they had. And his whole thing is he breaks people's backs. Yep. And is this Hawk's shadow that's doing? No, that? that's that's, that's shadow actual Hawk. shadow Hawk. And this guy looks like he's doing the coming. <laughs> that guy's look at the fucking hair on that dude. Jesus. Back to the fucking rain. Yeah, it always rains. Shadow Hawk's world. <clears throat> is that Savage Dragon, or is that that dude in his hair? I guess I. It's, I don't even know. Oh, this is the this is a uh, hawk shadow. This is this hawk is shadow. yes, because okay. there's his uh, that's his uh, little little helmet thing, right. little visor. So here he is. This is hawk shadow. Yeah. All right, now he's got some things to say. <laughs> uh, let's see. So he's, he runs up on this black dude. Let's just read. Let's just read this whole. Page. Let me get in. Let me get in close here. Let's read this whole page. And it looks as though God is on my side. Is this uh, this is his? This is this we're is in, his thoughts. We're in yeah. Hawk Shadow's head. Just looking at them, laughing, carrying on, listening to that rap music, and it's all in uh, bold. They must be gangbangers. Why else would they be out on a night like this, wearing them baggy clothes? End of the line, suckers. Oof. 
Yo, man, don't you be getting in my face. I'll, you'll do nothing, darky. Except a couple, except of course, get yourself into trouble in spades, which I guess is supposed to be like a, yeah. it's like a racist reference, yeah. which is like, I, I've never in my life. Yeah. Ha, huh? I made a funny. I've never in my life heard of a, a black person referred to as a spade. Yeah, that's definitely a very 60s, 50s, 60s. Okay. <sighs> then here it comes. Yeah. Shadowhawk comes busting in. That's him. That nerdy, that nerdy, that dirty, no good son of a. Stop. Who? What? You're, you're Shadowhawk. And he's got this black dude all fucked up down here holding him. I mean, you can barely tell because of all the se semen, all the cum <laughs> pouring through the, uh, the panel here. I mean, these 300 dudes are just, they just can't stop coming. Um, so then we fight, we fight a little bit here and you, you're the murderer. Who's appropriated my name? Yes, I call myself Hawk's Shadow, and I've taken on your sacred mission to rid our streets of vermin that no, our missions are not the same. I don't kill. Whack. That's the line I never cross. Shrek, you're insane. We're exactly alike, you and me. I'm only doing what you do. I'm killing. Okay. There it is. He's killing in words. What? You. Ignorant. <laughs> look at, look, 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 look. Okay. You. Ignorant. Racist. Fool. Now, we've never seen what Shadowhawk looks like nope. at this point. And so we flip the page, and it's like, not only is it a all the way around. Not only is it a uh, a sideways shot. You mean like me? <laughs> it's just how is that for a reveal, gang? And then does this is this where it picks up? Yeah. Ugh. Oh yeah, because now it it gate folds. This way, so we now we now have a, another gatefold here. Woo! Nineties comics, Johnny. Yeah. There is nothing like nineties comics. There's there's people that complain that this was like a trash era, and I suppose what we're looking at is some pretty trashy fucking comics here. But I mean, I can't get enough of nineties image comics. It was something else. Ugh! Crack! You rotten son of a! I've been fighting scum like you all of my life, all of my life. Oh, we got to go all the way across, don't we? We've been fighting you. Fighting to keep our country from becoming a third world nation. Your country. This is my country, too. And he's all beat to shit down here. And then stop it, Paul. Before you kill him. So we don't even know this guy's name is Paul at this point, yeah. right? Like, this is all the reveal of uh, Shadowhawk's identity. And uh, whoever the fuck this is, I want to kill him. It's all he deserves. Maybe so, but his death won't change anything. It'll make me feel better. Is that what our mission has become? Personal vengeance. Look at his sad little Shadowhawk eyes. He's so sad. He's so torn in the moment. He, but he's a, but he's racist. <laughs> Come on, Paul. Let's go get into the truck and go. This was supposed to be about making a difference. If you kill him in cold blood, then you're no different than he is. Just one more murderer. Come on, Polly. Don't give in now. All right, Christina. There's my good soldier. How's Carl? Not good. They don't think he's going to make it. He just can't seem to heal. Then here's the cops. Mother of Pearl. He looks pretty busted up. See if he's still alive. Yeah, we got a pulse. Better call for an ambulance. Will do. Yes, that's correct. No, no, sir. It does not look as though his back is broken. 
been spared. The man who deserves it more than anyone has his back spared. So that's, uh, I mean, uh, and you said this was, uh, this that was a bridge too far? That was <laughs> yeah. the, the proverbial straw that broke the camel's back, uh, yep. pun, pun intended? Yeah. You decided that the uh, the racial issue of uh, Shadowhawk was, is it because he was black? You decided you could, uh, <laughs> like, I'm not going to, I ain't going to read a book about no black guy. <laughs> I guess we've discovered it. <laughs> it's a, more of a mirror. His, his helmet's a mirror looking to my soul. Oh, boy. That's, uh, uh, man, that, I don't think there's any. You've been telling me about this comic for like 20 years. Yeah. And uh, you, you you know, you sold it just, I mean, it is all there. That's as crazy dramatic of a in-bomb as I've ever seen, really, any in any yeah. media. I mean, it doesn't get much uh, crazier than that. And I'm pretty sure Jim Valentino is not a black guy. So no, he just. But that's this was the '90s, dude. Yeah. You could just do you could do something like this, and uh, yes, it was designed to be provocative, and yes, it was designed to get people talking at the at the new new comics rack at your local comic shop. But um, it, I don't think there were probably any repercussions. No. You know, against him, like, oh, Jim Valentino put an in bomb in his book. Let's cancel him. I, I don't think that that was, um, you know, for better or worse. I mean, some of our more woke listeners on the channel are going to say, like, well, that's why the '90s. That's why everyone was racist. That's why we need DEI now because white dudes could write comics and drop in bombs in them. But for for my money, I think the '90s was a much more um, open culture. Yeah. It was a much more forgiving and um, uh, free. Uh, free thinking culture where you could be white, black, or otherwise, and have conversations about racial issues and not be told that your, um, your language had to be relegated to one, one, one side or the other based on the color of your skin. You were just allowed to have discussions about it. And this is a, a comic that attempts to um, very ham fistedly <laughs> yes, yes. address, uh, uh, address, issues of, of, of race and race and hate crimes and, and that kind of stuff. And I, and I, you know, for, you know, again, for my money, I'll take these like provocative um, image comics over just about any other uh, like the, like current, current year, like woke scold comics would be like 15 panels of a woman laying on a, of, of like, of like she Hulk laying in bed, texting somebody on the phone, talking about the patriarchy. And it's just like, this is done in an action comic setting where you know we've got these big hulking superheroes that are doing battle and um, and then and then using these like these great um, gatefold uh, you know options to to tell these uh, to tell these stories in a way that modern comics just doesn't use this kind of drama no. uh, or gimmicks to sell to sell this kind of stuff and you know whether it, it's successful in its um, in its delivery or not, uh, it, it's entertaining. Yes, it's entertaining in a way that uh, that modern comics uh, fail at in a lot of, in a lot of ways. And that's why I say, like, when I look back now, I'm I have a more just... fondness of it because you know the just the the sheer audacity to put out a comic um, like this is just not there um, anymore. So it, it just there was a hunger in the '90s for for that pop. For that, um, you know, to, to, for for your book to hit the newsstands and really make an impact. Because think about how Jim Val think about Jim Valentino's competition at the time with Rob Liefeld, Todd McFarlane, um, uh, Jim Lee. He just it was a murderer's row of the most popular um, and talented artists of the era. And so you had to, if you didn't want to get lost in the fucking shuffle, you had to come with something, some yeah. gimmick, some. Your, your gimmick had to be. Your gimmick game had to be tight, or else you were just going to get lost on the shelves next to everybody else. This is a um, comics preview of this images of Shadowhawk. Let's see what they have to say about. It. Let's see what the copy on this. Let's see how they're trying to sell me on this. One of the surprise hits of 1992, Shadowhawk quickly sold out around the country, buoyed by an interesting premise: a lead character whose real identity was a mystery even to the reader, and one of the most visually striking covers in the history of comics. The first issue quickly became Image's highest-priced back issue. And the white-hot success of Shadowhawk 2 proved that its popularity was no fluke. Okay, so... Yeah, that was one of them. 
Images of Shadowhawk was conceived as an ongoing monthly series to bridge the gaps between creator, writer, artist Jim Valentino's series of five finite series, two of which, Out of the Shadows and The Secrets Revealed, have been published. Thus, this third series will maintain the unique creative vision behind the character while also answering the demand of both fans and retailers alike. The new series will feature a three-issue story arcs by some of the finest creative teams in comics today, each presenting their own unique way, uh, their own unique vision of Image's most mysterious hero. First up is a story by two of the masters of the art form, storyteller artist Keith Giffen, creator of Lobo, and dialoguer Alan Grant, creator of Judge Dredd. <clears throat> Known for thumbing their nose at conventional comics wisdom, Giffen and Grant promise to bring Shadowhawk over the top when they team him reluctantly with Giffen's own smash image character, Trencher, and pit the two heroes against the body-hopping uh, paranormals known as the Twilight Runners. Expect anything except the usual for, for a night that neither Shadowhawk nor the reader is likely to soon forget. Giffen and Grant will be joined for the three-issue series by colorist Clyde Nee and letterer Ken Lopez. Images of Shadowhawk will be printed on the highest on the high gloss paper stock that has become an image comic standard and will feature the vibrant colors image has become famous for. All that for the standard price of a buck ninety-five, making it easy on the pocket as it as easy on the pocket as it is captivating to the eye. So that's you were kind of confused earlier. You thought that the images of Shadowhawk was like a bunch of different people, but it, apparently it was. Or at least yeah. it was going to be three issue arcs of different creators doing Shadowhawk. So this was the Keith Griffin, Alan Grant um run on that so that's interesting to have that back there because you're, you're going back to chicago with this so when i do um my uh episodes on images of shadowhawk that won't, that copy won't be around so i'm glad we got that on uh we got that preserved in the in the strangeville archives so yeah. any, anything else you got to say about uh shadowhawk 2 the, the in bomb issue uh i think it speaks for itself All right, gang, if you've got some controversial comics hanging out in your collection that you'd like to see us do uh, videos on here on the channel, you can send those to Kevin Strange, P.O. Box number 5, Cottage Hills, Illinois, 62018. Uh, if you are a creator and you want to send us your comic to take a look at, um, you can throw that comic book piece of yours in the mail and uh, send it to the, the P.O. box. As you can hear all the drilling and sawing in the background, we're actually expanding the P.O. box. The P.O. box is actually going to become life-size for me to actually enter into the P.O. box and physically grab the packages myself uh, when all is said and done. So um, I guess that'll do it for uh, the Shadowhawk inbound issue. Um, hope I see you guys at the, whoops, hope I see you guys at the dollar bin. And remember to keep on digging.